Salute's armies are on the march. And Baldur's Gate is their target. Catherick is defeated. The path ahead clear. You should be elated. The sight of the land you leave behind does nothing to alleviate your sorrow. Though however deep your pain, it cannot compare to Halsin's. Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Worm's Rock is secure, and preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the flaming fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Catherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. I itch to be with you. Split your skin to see your skull shine in the light, little tyrant. <sighs> Lucky for you, I harvested a whole family of living flesh in Rivington at High Sun. They will sate my blade thirst tonight. Oh. But tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, my blades will thirst again. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away.
You have business to conclude before we march. Have it done. The road to Baldur's Gate is long, and the city needs us. The gate is closed, as is Cazador. Cazador and his right of profane ascension. An imperial soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master. And elevate him to an unfathomable station. To place him in a position of such esteem. The world will yearn to kneel and offer their necks. Of course I envy him. Why wouldn't I? The problem with what Cazador has done is that he did it to me. If the time comes and I can stay one move ahead of him, I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. <laughs> What's a handful of the wretched servants? If they're anything like me when I was enslaved, they're all but begging for death anyway. After 200 years of shit, pure shit! I think I deserve something better. We'll be glorious both, you and I. You'll have your day too. Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Cazador's front door. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more and be finely positioned for yours truly to ascend. If we don't find my brethren, they'll find us, likely with bared fangs. We should get to them first, and then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Unless Cazador has changed their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey. The events of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of mind flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the astral prison. 
and the mysterious visitor inside of it. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the dead three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. Will you liberate them from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? Right now, your resolve feels firm, but there is no knowing how you will feel when the moment comes. You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. Hear me. Gather. The reckoning is upon us. The city thirsts for domination. March. Join. We're under attack. Help me. Oh, you lifted harbor up. your way to the portal. I need your help. without you. Breathe deep and move.
is always going to blow. And soon. Can't hold them back alone. to the skull. It's not over. Come to the skull.
I'm the one that's been protecting you. I am the one that came to you in your dreams. Help me. The honor guard. Eliminate them. My forces are weakened by their assault. But with your help, we can turn this around. Destroy the guard. I will subdue their master. position.
Don't look at me like that. I am a Mind Flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the Absolute. It's obscene. To owe my life to a damned geek. No more lies. No more tricks. I will have answers! If I'd known you would be so open-minded, I would have saved myself a lot of effort. But I'm glad you're not here to judge. I was someone once. Someone just like you. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate. Though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of Mind Slayers who caught me. Changed me into what I am now. For years, I served the Elder Brain. The one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other. But I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them. Rarely missed. And they fueled me while I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stillmane. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence. Though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain, where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight, to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Rather them than potential future allies, like you. Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. Orpheus? Impossible! He was slain by Shistil Kithrak himself. Quite possible, I assure you. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus's mother to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus's mother left, a usurper took her place. Blacketh declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Blacketh wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my home, that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. No. Gortash sent me on a mission to retrieve the Astral Prism. I was one of many, but the first to find it. How Gortash or the other Chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside. 
and found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blackith was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. I don't understand. The histories claim the prince was burned to ash in the skies. Your histories are fabrications. The prince was not killed. As you can very well see, he was imprisoned. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him, and in so doing, you would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid. A sworn enemy, just like me. I appreciate that. But this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, I searched for a new vessel. But the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance, I already had to hand in the form of magic. And that humanoid shape you've come to know. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You, too, should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent Alithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. The answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you. As I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well with the limited form you have. But you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? You will be able to do things you never thought were possible. There will be physical alterations, of course. But only partial. You will retain most of your current form, and you will soon see that the benefits outweigh any perceived loss. Even as you say the words, you feel a lurch of disappointment. Your mind bristles with the lithid potential. How could you be so cruel as to deny yourself what you want most in the world? I felt that. It's your nature. You cannot fight it, so embrace it. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. 
It must commune with another. growth with painful intensity. It has been starved of life, of purpose. It welcomes your probing like a void waiting to be filled. If you let it, it will evolve you, just as the Emperor said. A wave of disappointment, stronger than any you've ever felt. And then, stillness. You've resisted your illicit instincts. For now. You are not ready yet. Keep hold of it then, until you are. It has enough vitality to further your evolution and your allies. Perhaps you will be more inclined to try it when you see more of what our enemy can do. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. There is nothing further I can do for you right now. Consider using my gift. Thank you. 
quickly then. Boots have seen everything. I'm listening. Orpheus, Gith's only son. He lives. It is not the Gaith visitor that Vlakith would destroy and Vos would set free. It is Orpheus, the blood of the mother, the prince of the comet. Listen close. The Empress spoke only in half-truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Vlakith. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Gith Yankee our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. Yes. Our current Queen has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus was... is... Gith's only son. He led his mother's own honor guard in a coup against Vlakith 1. It was Kithrak Vos himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle, or so the Varshis teach us. Yet the prince of the comet's been with us, subdued by that repugnant illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would tear Vlakith's empire to pieces and build new glory from the scraps. We meet Vos in the city, and we obtain the key to freeing Orpheus from his prison. Every word Voss spoke, he spoke true. Orpheus is the living proof of the Queen's lies, and the living weapon that conquered our Gaith slavers. One word from his lips, and the people would doubt. Two words, and they would rage. Three words, and they would bow to the true heir. If the Githyanki are to be free, the Prince of the Comet must lead the way. Mark my words, this power would be no blessing, but a curse. You might as well ask me to gouge out my eyes for the promise of sight, or slice off my tongue for the promise of taste. Consume all the gay tadpoles you wish. I'm not so craven. Gladly. A mind flayer has been getting their tentacles all over our dreams this whole time. I'm really not sure about putting any trust at all in this thing. It's already shown itself a liar. 
I've got my eyes on the Emperor, and Karlak doesn't blink. The rug pool, eh? A mind flayer manipulating us this whole time. Such creatures are not to be trusted as a general rule, though this one does appear to have had a significant hand in our survival up to this point. At best, an ally whose motivations remain shrouded in deceit. We should be wary of what such an alliance may cost us. I can only imagine what I could do were I to adopt the biology of a mind flayer. You've not taken this power for yourself. So I can only wonder why offer it to me? If this is what the fates have offered to aid our cause, then who am I to refuse? I'll take your tap, Paul. Let's see what it has to offer. Life pulses from within. The parasite's thoughts whisper at the edge of your mind. It wants to share itself with you. It wants to be let in. Go on. Don't be afraid. It only wants to help you evolve. A coldness seeps through your veins as the tadpole awakens. It's yearning almost unbearable. Your mind is a veritable feast. The tadpole's essence courses through you. Where it touches, your flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. Perhaps, once the others see what you can do, they will consider trying it for themselves. What's on your mind? Charmed, I'm sure. So, we owe our lack of tentacles to one of the very creatures that kidnapped us. And now it's offering us power if we're willing to... evolve. We both know what it is capable of, but I'm not touching it. That was before I knew the cost. Before I knew it meant transforming into some grotesque beast. I remember how it hurt when I turned into a vampire. My 
body writhed and warped while I was utterly helpless. The grip of death owned my heart as it beat its last. I, I don't want to turn into anything else. I can't do that again. I can't watch my body be taken over. If we master the tapples, it will be different. But right now, that mastery depends on an illithid and its Githyanki slave. I'm not going to submit to this. Don't ask me again.
must find where Gortash and Orin have established themselves and take their nether stones. <laughs> <laughs>